Okay, I thought we'd try something else. Uh, I also have an AC200L. Uh, it's almost like a mini AC300. It, it's not quite, it's more portable. It has two kilowatt hours of battery in it and it can be expanded uh, with two B300s. Uh, don't ask me why these are facing the other direction. The expansion port on the 200L is on its left side, the expansion ports on the AC300 are on the right side. So to, to use the B300s with the 200L, uh, you need to spin things around backwards. So the front of the base of the B300s are that way and the front of the 200L is, is facing, facing us. But I wanted to try something. The 200L has the high amp TT30 port uh, the 200L is 2400 watt rated, uh, which is less than the 3000 watt rating of the AC300, but uh, it's got some punch to it. So I figured we would try uh, to use it with the transfer switch. Now, Blue Eddy specifically says that you cannot use this thing uh, per the home integration guide. You cannot use it pass through. Um, so I, I very deliberately have the power cord up here uh, you cannot use this in a full-time fall-back-to-grid type scenario. Um, it will power loads. It has all the UPS modes, uh, PV priority and all that. Uh, you just cannot use it with the transfer switch, with the uh, you know, bonded neutral, uh, all that sort of thing. You cannot plug this in while it's connected to the transfer switch. So I have, I have down here the other end of my cord that goes to the transfer switch. All the switches are currently in the uh, utility position. So let's connect this thing up. Let me get the app. That should be popping up somewhere. Uh, we currently have 795 watts of uh, solar coming in. We're at 90% state of charge. Um, AC is off. Let me click the button, turn the inverter on. All right, we have AC output. So let's just pretend uh, that we had a grid outage. Um, you know, I'm gonna leave the lights on here, but uh, let's pretend we did. Well, maybe I'll just do that. I'll turn them off. Go to my main panel, turn off the house. Look, everything's off. Now we wanna turn, we wanna bring some things back on. That's my little uh, UPS that's on my, uh, internet router. So let's turn on, let's just start with the basement. Basement lights came on. And the router. And my laser printer. Yeah. All through the, uh, all through the AC200. Let's uh, let's turn the garage fridge on. Let's turn the kitchen fridge on. So yeah, we're on uh, we're on backup power from the uh, AC two hundred L. We're still bringing in solar, three hundred seventy three watts of solar. Uh, yeah. It's running just fine. Uh, I'm going to take all this apart and go outside and try this on the gener generator interlock that's outside. And uh, I think I'll try to run it off my Hondas, uh, Honda, just like I did the uh, AC300 in one of the previous videos. Uh, come back in a bit. All right, we're outside with the uh, AC200L and two B300s, uh, 2400 watt inverter, 2048 watt hours on board on the 200L. And then each of the B300s is three kilowatt hours. So three, six, seven, eight kilowatt hours, this eight kilowatt hour stack here. This is the max configuration that you can have on the AC200L. 
And uh, if this all looks familiar, I did the exact same thing with my AC300. I wanted to see how the 200L uh, handles this. I have uh, run it outside. I've got, uh, I've got cords running. Uh, it is currently on solar. Let me bring, uh, bring the app up here. I'll try and it'll, it'll show up here somewhere. Uh, it's currently bringing in 795 watts of solar. Something I found out with the 200L, uh, just like the AC2A and I believe the AC70, some of Blue Eddy's newer products, uh, the charge modes will throttle the solar. So it is currently 795 watts. I have it set to silent charging. If I set it to standard, We should see, oh look, 1.2 kilowatts, it's maximum. Um, if I set it to turbo, I don't think anything will happen yet. I think turbo will throttle it uh, being able to dual charge. So let's, uh, let's test that. I'll leave it, I'll put it back to standard so, I'm sorry, standard charge mode, not standard UPS. Standard charge mode. And let's connect it to my transfer switch. So uh, we've got again the TT30 outlet on the front. I have on the side of my house here a L1430 flanged inlet to an interlocked uh, main breaker back feed. So I'm going to connect the TT30 end. Yep. TT30 end to the AC200. All right, that's all fired up. Let's turn on the AC output. I will take uh, the app with me, I will take you with me, and uh, let's go see what happens when I uh, throw the interlock. Okay, so here we are at my main panel in the house. This is exactly uh, how I left it here. Everything on my transfer switch is set to utility power, main panel, interlocked main breaker, generator back feed breaker. This is the official interlock kit from Eaton that is named on the sticker uh, for my Eaton panel. So this is officially you're supposed to only use the interlock part number that is on this sticker, uh, not a third party kit. But what I'm going to do is go through and turn off all of my non-essential loads. So that is the range, the dryer, the air conditioner. Furnace, septic stuff we don't need for this. All right, so I have uh, kitchen, fridge, you know, pretty much the same things that I uh, was was showing on here are, are still turned on. So I will turn off the house main. I will turn on the back feed from the AC 200 L and look at the app. So there's the power. So we are currently drawing and back feeding from the AC 200 L. I want a little bit more load. I think the septic aerator should give me 100 watts. Okay, let's go back outside. I'll put this thing on the tripod and we'll watch it for a bit. All right, I turned on some more load. We're back outside. Uh, I turned on a little heater in the house just to bring the load up. Uh, we are getting close to full and the 200L is throttling the solar input. Um, I was hoping I would catch it before that happened so we could show the generator 
uh, functionality. Oh, there's some solar coming back. I've effectively drained a, a bit out of it. So, um, yeah, let's, uh, let me fire up the Honda, plug these in, and we'll see if we can use that as a range extender to our already uh, 8 kilowatt hours of battery here. Uh, as a side note, th that little Honda generator, uh, its maximum output continuous is 1600 watts. Uh, it's called an EU2000 because it's a 2000 surge surge rating, uh, but 1600 watt continuous, which uh, the 200L can, can pull off of it. But one gallon of gas in that is uh, basically equivalent to, uh, I think I did the math, it was about five and a half kilowatt hours of electricity you can generate from the one gallon gas tank. So um, using that, we can uh, almost double the runtime of this uh, stack, assuming we started with full batteries here. Um, and then you could uh, fire that up uh, you know, during the day, run off a battery at night. You wouldn't necessarily have your uh, power station out here, but it's, it's a nice day. I wanted to show you know, everything together. So let me, let me go fire up the Honda. Okay, uh, connect the power. Well, that answers that. I heard it take power from it immediately. So we are currently uh, making 939 watts off of solar. 1200 watts off the generator. I have it set to 10 amp uh, current limit. We're putting out uh, 1,300 watts to the house. I think we can click on these on the 200L and see more detail. Eleven hundred eighty-two watts, 1,185. Uh, let me go into the settings and let's mess with the charge mode. So if I put it to silent, I did not change anything. It did throttle the solar, but not the grid input. If I set it to turbo, look at that. So the charge mode messed with the solar input limit, but I'm still, uh, oh, you know what? It's because the grid, it's, it's currently passing through. Uh, so it's, uh, it's actually net discharging from the grid part. We'll show that here in a minute. I'll unplug the house. Uh, let me go into advanced and I'll turn it up to 12 amps. Actually, I think it's 13 is what the Honda will allow. But 12 without the password. So there we're drawing 1400 watts. And I'm hearing the Honda burp. I'm not sure if it's so happy. Uh, let's, uh, let me turn off the AC output. It'll kill the house, but that's fine and uh, see what happens here. Okay, so I just turned off AC output and notice with it set to turbo mode, uh, it is drawing 1200 watts from solar and 470 watts from my generator. If I turn it down to standard mode, it drops the generator input entirely. If I set it to silent mode, 
it then throttles the solar. Uh, so keep that in mind with these uh, the newer uh, the newer units, the AC2A, the AC70, the AC200L. Uh, most likely the new AC240 uh, will exhibit this behavior. The charge modes impact solar uh, as well as utility input. Um, so things things we learn together. All right, um, I'm going to set this back so I don't forget when I use it next to standard. And uh, this has been fun. So the uh, AC200L is definitely a viable home backup solution. Uh, by itself, with uh, extended batteries, again, I'm showing it here. Uh, with two B300s, this is its maximum configurable uh, storage, uh, 8 kilowatt hours of, uh, of capacity here, 2400 watt inverter. It will back up my house in a storm situation. It will back up my house through the transfer switch, uh, you know, outage wise. Uh, you just cannot connect it uh, to utility power in the, the home integration way that you can with the uh, AC300 and AC500 units. But as, a, as an online backup, uh, PV priority, you know, you could run things just directly plugged into this, just not through the transfer switch. Um, that's it. It's a wonderful day. I'm going to let this thing charge up the rest of the way, turn off the Honda. Um, thanks for watching.